Good afternoon, everyone. I hope I'm audible to all. I hope I'm audible to all. Please mention in the chat section. Please mention in the chat section whether I'm audible or not. Now, who is going to do this? So, my testing. Hello, my testing. Hello, mic testing. Hello, mic testing.
Good afternoon all. Am I audible? Please mention in the chat whether am I audible or not. Good afternoon everyone. श्री बनारसीदास चांदीवाला सेवा स्मारक ट्रस्ट सोसाइटी श्री बनारसीदास चांदीवाला सेवा स्मारक ट्रस्ट सोसाइटी वॉज फाउंडेड बाय श्री ब्रिज कृष्ण चांदीवाला जी हु वॉज अ फ्रीडम फाइटर एंड अ क्लोज एसोसिएट ऑफ महात्मा गांधी ब्रिज कृष्ण जी वॉज बोर्न इन द ईयर 1900 इन एन हाईली रिगार्डेड चांदीवाला फैमिली who were silver traders in Chandni Chowk in Delhi He was educated at St Stephen's College Delhi where he happened to meet Bab for the first time in 1918 His meeting with Bab deeply influenced Brij Kishan ji and he became his ardent follower and a close associate Brij Kishan ji took to meager meals and to wearing khadi under gandhi ji's influence he would not use any mattress but would sleep on rugs he used to spin khadi on spinning wheel and would wear clothes made from that yarn only do a prolific writer but he was frugal with the usage of paper and would make sure to use it till its last bit while in delhi Gandhi ji used to often stay at Chandiwala's Haveli at Katra Khushal Rai. He was also there in 1924 where he observed his 21 day long fast for communal harmony. During the 1930s, Brij Krishan ji helped organize the stone breakers of Delhi into a union. took up cases of violation of their rights with the delhi administrators and in courts of law to ensure better compliance of government regulations regarding their work and to get compensation for them though he was asked by bapu not to participate in salt march in 1930 but he quit eating sugar and salt after that and did not do so for more than 50 years until mandated by his doctors Rich Krishan ji was with Gandhi ji on the day of his assassination 
and it was he who prepared Gandhi ji's body for cremation. Rich Krishan ji's devotion for Bapu had no bounds. He authored a three-volume book, Gandhi ji ki Delhi Diary. which chronicles gandhi's day in delhi the other notable book that he authored in hindi was titled bapu ke charno mein which was later translated into english as at the feet of bapu he was affectionately called as bhai ji by his associates taking the responsibility of providing human service in education post independence rich krishan ji founded shri banarsi das chandiwala seva smarak trust society in 1952 in the memory of his father late shri banarsi das chandiwala post independence women education was a big challenge and of utmost significance and shri brish krishan ji addressed this issue by setting up janki devi memorial college in the memory of his mother shri mati janki devi ji it was started in barracks at rouse avenue and was inaugurated by mrs indira gandhi in 1959 the foundation stone for the present building was laid at an off north campus site in central delhi at sir ganga ram hospital mark to cater central and west delhi population by pandit jawahar lal nehru in 1960 this followed by laying of the foundation stone for the residential quarters by the fourth president of india shri b b giri janki devi memorial college is one of the prominent seats of women education in delhi and is an autonomous institution affiliated to delhi university the other educational institute for girls run by the trust is janki devi vocational center that equips the girls with vocational skills and paves the way towards their economic independence rich krishan ji was honored with padma shri in 1963 for his devotion and contributions in the field of social services shri banarsi das chandiwala seva smarak trust society runs four professional colleges affiliated to guru gobind singh in the prasth university banarsi das chandiwala institute of physiotherapy is approved by delhi council of physiotherapy and occupational therapy government of nct delhi and is categorized as grade A plus by SFRC Banarsi Das Chandiwala Institute of Information Technology and Banarsi Das Chandiwala Institute of Professional Studies Dwarka are both AICTE approved institutes also and categorized as grade A plus and grade A by SFRC respectively Banarsi Das Chandiwala Institute of Hotel Management and Catering Technology It is an AICTE approved and NAC accredited institute and also categorized as grade A+ by SFRC Furthering the other mission health the trust society is running multi specialty hospitals dispensaries and healthcare centers and offering varied services through Banarsi Das Chandiwala Institute of Medical Sciences and I Hospital at Kalka Ji New Delhi Banarsi Das Chandiwala I and Dental Care Center Jama Masjid and Banarsi Das Chandiwala I Hospital in Motihari Bihar Good afternoon, uh, sir, and Chesta, ma'am. Well, sir. Good afternoon. Am I audible to you? Yeah. Good afternoon. 
am i audible yes sir you are audible yes you are audible okay okay this time am i audible to you uh yes sir you are audible to me okay ma'am uh so we have uh, just uh, looking upon the glimpse ma'am and we just uh, Narsidas Chandiwala Institute of Physiotherapy runs a four and a half year bachelor in physiotherapy program. BCIP is situated at hardly 200 meters walking distance from Govindpuri metro station. In this ragging free campus of the institute, the academic area comprises of state of the art infrastructure. The classrooms of PCIP are well ventilated, spacious and air conditioned, equipped with all modern facilities and audiovisual aids. The exercise therapy lab has various gadgets like shoulder wheel, finger ladder, wall bar, parallel bar, suspension apparatus, Swiss balls, therabands and thera tubes, wobble boards and many others. The electrotherapy lab has various equipments like short wave diathermy ultrasound mechanical traction multi stimulators paraffin wax bath hydrocolator packs infrared lamp ultraviolet lamp and many more modalities for students to practice the biomechanics lab is a specialized research lab with its unique gait and motion analysis system emg biofeedback unit and other facilities Manual therapy lab promotes basic infrastructure for assessment and conduction of manipulation and mobilization techniques for joint and soft tissues. The research lab. It is also designed to facilitate appropriate environment and equipped with latest modalities and tools to carry out research activities with EMG biofeedback and evoke potential unit. electronic pen and maze for sensory integration dynamometer to measure muscle strength vestibular rehabilitation aids and hand reeducation tools the physiology lab is well equipped to conduct practicals on hematology respiratory system cardiovascular system and nervous system anatomy lab provides the students with state of art models charts skeleton and specimen to practice the minute details of anatomy this lab has ample number of bones for the students to observe and practice the lab is also having anatomy museum of human body parts bcip has a wifi enabled campus and a computer lab with dedicated lease line net utilization which facilitates the students for their curriculum and projects the physiotherapy clinic run by the institute has various assessment diagnostic and treatment modalities for the patients the modern equipments for fitness fat analysis lung function testing digital balance assessment and various others for pain management and rehabilitation makes us one of the best training centers for the physiotherapy students the primary repository of learning and knowledge at bcip is the library with over 3000 books on physiotherapy medical subjects and related areas besides a large collection of newspapers magazines national and international periodicals and journals 
BCIP also has a modern auditorium for students all round development in different aspects there is an in campus canteen an area for relaxation and rejoicing for the students the campus also has hospital facility and health services hostel facility is also available for both boys and girls separately A very good afternoon to one and all present here today. I Shivam, a student of BPT fourth year of Banarsi Das Chandiwala Institute of Physiotherapy, welcomes you all in today's webinar on the topic intellectual property rights. Intellectual property is the category of property that includes. intangible creations of human intellect ipr is a key aspect of economic development not only in physiotherapy but in every profession so without any further delay let's begin our today's session by welcoming our dignitaries <coughs> mr dp goel co-chair msme committee phd cci sir began his career in 1970 upon completing his electrical engineering sir is also associated with phd cci as a co-chair for msme cell chairman of msme committee of a council and is actively involved in welfare and benefit of the msme sector sir is a national awardee from the ministry of msme in 2013 and has earned the prestigious outstanding entrepreneurship award from phd cci in the year 2016 he received philip calder marketing awards on innovation in 2019 now we go to our speaker of today's session ms chesta sharma director iipta an innovative holistic and effective leader with 12 years of experience in technology and legal industries services industries and outgoing service oriented organized professional with a unique international background and a natural interest in intellectual property and marketing she also specializes working across functions of product delivery marketing across varied geographies of india united states european union skilled in marketing and entrepreneur and intellectual property she is an ip professional with profound commitment towards the creation and protection of strategic and tactical intellectual property assets of her clients her areas of expertise include healthcare and medical devices renewable energy automobile technology and consumer goods we welcome you ma'am moving to our next speaker mr varun gogia sir is presently a principal associate at the united ipr new delhi with a post qualification experience over a decade he has been responsible for advising drafting and negotiating with internal and external agencies globally on ip related matters predominantly on enforcement of ip rights developing and maintaining a robust expertise of ip and other laws regulations and guidelines is his forte he is currently spearheading in the enforcement of ip rights of various well known brands with the indian customs he is today one of the central pillars in the organization his key areas of expertise include ip prosecution litigation and enforcement anti counterfeiting brand protection and unfair trade practice now let's move on our today's dignitary ms kanchan jutsi senior secretary phd cci ma'am is having over 15 years of working experience in industry associations chamber of commerce interfacing on economic and policy issues with government authorities and industry 
tracking and analyzing various policies related to business environment regulations, legal slash MSME, and suggesting appropriate modification to the government authorities. She has thorough knowledge of acts, rules, and regulation, government policies, and intellectual property rights, and energy efficiency events, thereby making them globally competitive. She is committee member of FICSI, Food Industry Capacity and Skill Initiative, Environment Protection Section Committee of BIS. Now, I would, uh, would like to request uh, Mr. D.P. Goel to kindly uh, enlighten us with his words of wisdom. Please, sir. you have to unmute yourself one minute yes sir you are audible now okay <clears throat> yeah good afternoon a very warm welcome to all the speakers management of banarsidas chandiwala institute of physiotherapy and all the young minds present here Today's topic of discussion is on intellectual property rights and protecting it is very important in today's business operations. Let me start by introducing our organization. The PhD Chamber of Commerce and Industry established in 1905 is a proactive and dynamic multi-state apex organization working at the grassroots level with strong national and international linkages. The chamber acts as a catalyst in the promotion of industry, trade, and entrepreneurship. PSD chamber, through its research-based policy advocacy role, positively impacts the economic growth and development of the nation. PSD chamber has been actively contributing to the policy-making exercise of the Ministry of micro, small, and medium enterprises. As one of the four apex chambers of the country, it is a key driver of policies at the national and state levels. Apart from its headquarters in New Delhi, the chamber has regional offices in Jammu, Shimla, Chandigarh, Lucknow, Jaipur, and Bhopal. Besides these strategic tie-ups with industry bodies in other states, PSD Chamber has a direct membership of over 2,000 corporate entities and serves more than 1,30,000 indirect members through 150 association members and eight secretarial affiliates. The membership covers trade and industry and largely at the MSME in all the states. The Chamber also has Intellectual Property Facilitation Center supported by the Office of Development Commissioner, Ministry of MSME, Government of India, under which various IPR-related activities are being organized. The main objective of this session is to encourage young generations to showcase their talent by way of innovating and getting their work protected. Intellectual property protection is critical in fostering innovation. Without protection of ideas, businesses and individuals would not reap the full benefits of their inventions and would focus less on research and development. Intellectual Sir, I think you have got mute. Uh, hello, sir. Am I audible? Like the Make in India, Startup India, Digital India, and Skill India. The Atal Innovation Mission nurtures the innovative energies across the country in schools and universities. Under the IPR policy, the sell for IPR promotion and management 
CIPAM has been tasked to facilitate creation and commercialization of IP assets in the collaboration with the Office of Controller General of Patents, Design and Trademarks. The filings for IP rights have considerably increased and the intellectual property offices are also getting revamped in terms of capacity building. More examiners have been recruited and trained in patents. The patent office started functioning as international searching and examining authority since October 2013. It is encouraging to note that more applications are now choosing IPO for international research to ensure quality in all of our operations. A dedicated quality assurance division has been set up in the patent office. With all the efforts in place, it is expected that IPO would leap to even greater heights. Let us now begin the session by listening to our esteemed speakers who are here to share their experience and valuable inputs on this topic. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Now I would like to invite Chester Ma'am to take over the session. Uh, thank you, uh, Shivam. Uh, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. And thank you, sir, for a very uh, beautiful introduction about how India is growing and how Indian Patent Office and its functions have been strengthened in last few years. And as a part of IP community, um, I'm super proud that IP uh, filings are increased in India and we have a better facility coming in India as an ISA and the operations and the grant of patents has increased. So we, uh, we are at a very uh, like becoming huge and huge and a very busy our patent office which is a good news for all the community people like us. And now I would like to start my session and thank you PhD Chambers of Commerce and BCIP for inviting me here. My name is Cheshta Sharma and he has already int introduced me earlier, uh, Mr. Shivam, but yes, a little bit introduction. My name is Cheshta Sharma. I am director at Indian Institute of Patent and Trademark. We are based out of Delhi only. And we uh, provide IP education services and consulting to various companies, to various universities and colleges to help them come out with their intellectual properties. So can I share my screen with a little presentation? Of course not. Yeah. So as I know, all the students uh, uh, which are present here today are from physiotherapy and healthcare background. So I want, I just don't want to just speak. I want all the participants to be interactive, to interact with me through the chat section. I think the chat facility is already on. So uh, uh, in case, in, in any between you want to ask questions and I will be also asking questions. So I want you to be interactive by uh, saying Hi, yes or no in the chat section so that we, I want it to be very interactive sessions with all of you. So uh, I think uh, most of the students, I think mo most of the students present here are in like final year or they're teachers. So what is what is your background? Just just a little word of a chat, uh, a sentence in a chat so that I can understand your background and, and I can guide you accordingly that you are a student of which year or you are a faculty or you're somebody engaged in uh, research or diagnosis or dealing with patients working in any hospital. So a little bit introduction will be very helpful if you can write down in the chat. All right. So I will start with uh, intellectual property and innovation in physiotherapy and healthcare. So, so very basic uh, thing. What is intellectual property? So intellectual property is made of two words. One, first is intellectual and second is property. So intellectual means what you are thinking out of your brain, what are the creations of mind, okay? So what, what you can think anything from your brain, like, so you are thinking of a solution to a certain kind of problem, which you are facing as a physiotherapist while treating any kind of patient, any creative idea you have of a, maybe by writing, by writing a song, by designing an instrument or by, by way of designing can include like all the exercises you have, all the modalities you have, all the exercise features which you do. And thank you in the chat for Roshini, Mohammed and Aarti that for, for participating in the chat. Thank you so much. So you are finally a students. All right. Awesome. So 
coming back to the word intellectual property so first word is intellectual intellectual is derived from the word intellect which means what you are thinking out of your brain and second word is property so when i go to a common person and ask what is a property a common person will understand property like i have a home i have a car i have a bike so so let's say you have a home so how do you earn money out of your home you can rent your home you can sell your home you can go to bank mortgage your home and earn money now once we combine these two words intellectual property so now they become your monetary asset that means let's say you have designed some new modality for exercise or you have designed any diagnostic method so that kind of solution which you have to a particular problem is your intellectual property and you can earn money you can monetize that intellectual property this is the basic meaning of intellectual property if you are understanding it i want you to type yes y e s in the chat section so that i understand you are understanding the meaning of a basic term what is intellectual property so intellectual property rights are that we get rights over our inventions over our uh, things which we are thinking out of your out of our brain so intellectual property rights are the exclusive rights on your property which you have created right so it can be in a form of patents it can be form of trademarks it can be copyrights it can be design these are the there, there are many types of intellectual property but from your perspective from a physiotherapy or healthcare these four are important uh, so i want to highlight Uh, and specifically target these four types of intellectual property so let's talk about first type uh, of hair that is patents so patents when when it comes to the word patents and i talk to like a uh, lot of uh, students and faculties and research scholars all over india so patents something people understand is something that i have to do some eureka <laughs> and i have to come out with something very innovative then only i have a i have something which is called patentable so i want to break down this myth and i want to say that patents is not a eureka patents are granted exclusive rights over the inventions the scientific inventions which you are doing and what are inventions inventions are simply a problem solution set problem solution set means that there is a problem and you are trying to find out a solution for that problem doesn't have to be like very revolutionary a problem can be very simple problem to uh, have a solution with to so to understand patents like patents are the exclusive rights which are given to inventors for their invention for their scientific invention for the period of 20 years for the period of 20 years 20 years is a big time because 20 years you can monetize your patent you can uh, you can market your patent you can start your own company uh, on base of that product or you can license your technology your patent to some manufacturing company and you can earn money so money is a incentive so that because you are investing in uh, investing money and time in r and d so basically i want to say that patents is not something eureka patents are a simpler problem solution set so think of the problems which you face while you are dealing with patients while you are treating them in your labs or in your clinic or in your hospital so some some small examples of like patentable ideas i have written the, uh, here on my slide for example use of exo exoskeleton in mobilizing joints by correcting joint rigidity right so you are all physiotherapists so you work on mobilizing joints yes if yes type yes like you learn of uh, all these things that how you can mobilize joints how how you can actions yes so there are new so so rather so there are new inventions in this field that can we use some certain kind of exoskeleton which can enhance the process so there's a problem and i want to find a smaller solution so can i design an exoskeleton for that so this is a simple problem solution set which is a patentable idea are you getting my point and next maybe in in the covid time so a newer sector in healthcare has come up like uh, telemedicine you must have heard this so in the physiotherapy world tele rehabilitation has come up in which you are giving your services via web via phone via mobile app and technology has made it easier to give your services as a physiotherapist being like you are distant from your patients you can't visit them right so this these small innovation these so small problem solution sets constitute a, a patentable idea so again the patents are on the scientific inventions again so 
uh, scientific inventions can be very simpler. Like it doesn't need to be uh, that I have to develop a rocket science. No, I ha I have a small solution, let's say of uh, waste management of making a, a suitable type of knife in a kitchen or maybe a better uh, uh, mobile system, a new mobile application, which can uh, give your patients the solutions within like within a small on their mobile phone. So simpler solutions. So now when it comes to patent and when it comes to inventions so whenever you have a certain kind of problem so you think of okay this can be a possible solution this can be possible solution i'm sure when you treat your patients you feel a lot of frustrations or you feel a lot of uh, uh, ideas also might be coming to your head that maybe if we can do this this much we must much better or maybe you will be treating them with different kinds of therapies uh, which which you are more expert than me. So whenever you have such ideas, which are like you think are newer. So for a patent, you need to check three things. Three things need to be checked. Number one, novelty. Number two, inventive step. Number three, industrial use. So whenever you think of certain new idea or a new solution, which you think might be a new invention, which is patentable. So three things need to be checked. I want you to type number three in the chat if you're understanding it. Three things need to be checked in your invention. Number one, novelty. Number two, inventive step. Number three, industrial use. So we'll understand all these three pointers one by one because my main goal here is that with all the doctors, with all the physiotherapists present here, I'm sure you have a lot of ideas every day coming to your head. So, but you are, you must be thinking, okay, I cannot be an inventor. I cannot get a patent. So I want to break this myth. And I want to tell you in my next 10 minutes or 15 minutes of time that it is possible and how you can do that. So first criteria of patenting, that is novelty. Novelty simply means that you have a new solution or a newer product or a newer process, a new information as compared to any existing solution which is there in the market. Okay, so I have a very beautiful example uh, of a very small innovation of, uh, which uh, is to whom the patent is granted. That is, that's a US patent number which was granted in 2018. This, this is a, a patent from a, US patent, patent number US 119, this is a serial code number. So, and this is the innovation all about. So while treating a lot of patients, so there's a problem that uh, caregivers and maybe physiotherapists, they have, it is sometimes not possible for a customer to always buy a new bed. So there's a company, BedV, which is a home care device. It's a portable, automatically adjustable bed with a remote control and bed is of like wedge, wedge shape as seen in this diagram or a picture here, this actual invention, actual product. So now this type of product provides customer with an affordable way to adjust in bed without the need of purchasing a new bed and benefiting caregivers. So you must have seen a lot of patients struggling, especially in the COVID times when the patients were given care at home. So buying a new bed is a costly thing, right? Do you agree with me? Yes. So, so there, there has to be some newer solution, a better solution, an economical solution. So they, this inventor has designed a wedge shaped, this pneumatic bed, which can be controlled with a remote control. I'm sure you must have seen and because you are doctors you you face this kind of problem right if yes type yes and you have seen that uh, taking a patient out of bed and making him exercise and there's a hydraulic process related to it so if it can be economical if it can be cheaper there's a no uh, better invention like this so this this kind of invention uh, was patented and this is a very small uh, I'm sharing on my screen the patent of this particular product. Can you see on screen? This is US patents, which I'm, which I'm sharing. US patents. This is already a granted patent. Uh, 2018, it was filed. And they have designed a, how a wedge-shaped pillow. It's just a wedge-shaped pillow, which can lift a patient up. Okay. A very small solution to a, to a very, uh, I think it's, it's, a, it's a good problem to solve in healthcare. Right. So this is an example of how I can come up with a novel solution and I can come up with a very small solution of a problem, right? So if you are understanding it, I want you to type yes, that yes, this, uh, these kind of uh, things must be coming into your head everyday basis, right? So next, uh, next one, uh, next criteria of patenting is 
that inventive step. So first one was novelty, that information has to be entirely new, which was not existing before. So I have to do something new, a better thing, which was not available. Second is inventive step. Now, what does inventive step means? That if I have an invention, then I have to think that is it a technically advanced information or it is economically significant. So there can be either of these things. Agar wo purani invention is, it's a technical advancement. We have added more features. Or if I'm not adding more feature, then I'm making it economical. I'm making it cheaper, right, for the end customer. So this is inventive step criteria of any invention to get a patent, right? So I, I work with companies. Uh, so I have uh, given a very uh, small example where there's an increasing role of artificial intelligence in diagnosis in healthcare. So this is a real example of the technology which is developed in India only, where uh, use of AI to treat diabetic retinopathy. So I hope you all know these term diabetic retinopathy. I need not to explain that. Yes you know better than me, right? So, uh, so use of, uh, so what happens uh, in uh, diabetic retinopathy, if it is not diagnosed uh, in, in the proper time, so it can take long time and person will go blind, right? So this is, a, this is a, like a problem. So with this tool, they wanted to reduce the diagnostic time. So we have combined two different knowledge one is of healthcare and one is of artificial intelligence, that is computer science. So in this technology, what we have done, that we have taken the images of uh, an eye, right? And we have taken a lot of samples and we have given it to software. And now once software has learned that this type of eye pattern leads to blindness. So now once we feed a newer image to the software on the basis of pattern recognition, the machine is able to tell that this person is going to have a diabetic retinopathy or not. So what is happening? The, the places where doctors are not available, the places uh, where diagnosis is taking a lot of time. So diagnostic, diagnostic time has reduced and we are able to get result easily. As soon as we feed a picture to a, a artificial intelligence machine, it gives a probability that what is the diagnosis of this. And I'm sure like in your profession, uh, can you think of an idea where you you treat patients with a lot of things where you have some image pattern which a computer can recognize and can give the diagnostic results earlier. Can you think of this? If yes, type yes. I don't know whether it will work or not. I, and also you don't know whether it will work or not. But this is an idea which is like we can treat number of diseases based on image pattern recognition using artificial intelligence. And this is, this is the latest technology which is coming up in healthcare sector, in medical technology all over the world. And as a physiotherapist, I want you to really think that maybe you have the idea, maybe you have a lot of ideas that, okay, like diabetic retinopathy, maybe I can help in this kind of disease, maybe some kind of spinal injury or something. Uh, so we can, we can develop this technology, we can, get a, we can provide a better solution to the world to solve this problem. Next, uh, coming up with the third criteria of patenting, that is industrial use. So every invention that we are making, the third criteria which a patent needs to justify is that there has to be some industrial application of that particular technology. There has to be some use so that it can be manufactured, it can be sold. And finally, it's not just that we are doing a research, we have a patent, that's it. And we are just showcasing in your resume that we have got a patent. No, the patent office has a guidelines that if you have an invention, we need to commercialize it. We need to bring the solution to the people. And in return of that, patent office gives you an exclusive right of 20, of 20 years. So the main idea of the patenting system when it came when Patent Act 1970 was established, is to bring better solutions to the world. So industrial use and industrial applicability is important. So I have a very beautiful example of this exoskeleton, uh, which, which this invention got uh, uh, Inventors Award in 2022. And this is an exoskeleton which enables children to walk during muscle rehabilitation therapy and improving their well-being and extending their life expectancy. So I think this is, this is very much related to your field only. And uh, uh, this is a great invention. And if I can share a like a small video of how, how this invention works.
Um, is there any audio in the video? Yes, sir, ma'am. Hello. Is there any audio in the video? Uh, it's, it's just a background, uh, uh, just neutral music. It's not something right. they are speaking of. Right. So I'm just wanted to show uh, that uh, this this is a kind of invention which I think you as a physiotherapist can can definitely have uh, ideas which can solve such kind of problems. If you're finding this session useful, I want you to type useful. I want a little feedback for my. Uh, 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 session which is it's still going on but i want to understand that do you think this kind of information is useful because generally people associate that ipr is something which is legal based it is boring but i come from a science background and then i specialize into ipr so i know it is it is more about science and technology and bringing new innovations to the world and definitely law is something a uh, 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 yardstick of how how to do that okay uh, coming up next, so there are, we have discussed three criteria of any invention to get a patent. Number one is novelty, that is invention new or not. Number two, inventive step. Does our invention have an inventive step or it is uh, economical advanced? Number three is industrial use, that whether we are capable of, capable of being made, whether the invention is capable of being made use and in the industry and we are able to give solution to the end user. So this is the main goal. So uh, as as future innovators or doctors. So types of patents can be new ways of doing things and solving problems, designing better products. Uh, so you can think of that, okay, that particular process is happening through this way. I want to change the process and I want to see, or uh, can I make a better product rather than a process? So you can focus on anything. So it can be a process patent. It can be a product patent. It can be both the things and that process is also involved. Certain kind of product is also involved. So uh, generally, uh, students uh, or researchers ask me that how do I find new ideas so generally when I talk to researchers they refer to a lot of research papers um, while doing their research or when, 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 they, when you're doing your project or when you're doing your thesis work and I want to bring a very important point here that whenever you're doing your research in the research journals I want you to also do a patent research because patents are the are like uh, they're a big library of new ideas sitting over sitting in a in a uh, uh, free free uh, uh, online thing so whenever you want to search for more ideas let's say you want to uh, search for exoskeleton types for mobility or joint mobility or for spinal injury uh, you can do a patent search apart from just a google scholar search or looking at a journal because what are patents patents are the technical document which gives a complete information that how does an invention work along with the complete uh, diagram of it. So like uh, this exoskeleton which we were talking about, so this is a European Patent Office website. So we have websites, these information is like free. You can go to European Patent Office website, you can go to um, Indian Patent Office website which also gives a free patent search. Uh, so for India, you can go to IP, india.nic.in it's a free patent search that what kind of patents are being filed in india so this is a public search here which is like free available you can check the status of patents you can check public search the patents over here and you can enter any type of keywords and you can find the patents related to your thing on which you are researching so this is um so this is a like a document which which gives you entire information like we have seen this also you can download pdf and you can see how the invention works what are the drawings of that invention like this in this case how does the invention work what are the drawings of uh, uh, this uh, particular product and what uh, how it is working so patent gives an entire information about any kind of thing which you are researching on so it can be a great piece of research whenever you are developing any new product any new idea in your lab or whenever you are doing any kind of research so next time when you do a certain type of research work i want you to include these uh, sites like epo wipo ip india or google patents so that you can get a lot of ideas from there as well uh, so finding finding a new idea uh, whenever we are doing a research, so we can find out gaps in the technology where the possible innovation can happen. Like I told you uh, about artificial intelligence, so can use can artificial intelligence can 
detect uh, image patterns, right? So image patterns can be of anything from eye to any type of biomarker to any type of spinal injury. So now you have to see that what, what ideas you have. And as a doctor or working in a hospital, you, you have an experience, you have hands-on experience of working with patients. So you know better, okay, this is a tool, this by, and I can find out new idea. So finding applications for existing technology. So if some technology is already existing, so you can find out, okay, can this technology used, can be used in a better uh, way. For example, 3D printing is very, uh, is used in all the uh, different verticals nowadays. Uh, 3D printer, 3D printing of a tissue, 3D printing of organ, 3D printing of houses in an architecture field. So 3D printing from an industry of a metal where they're trying to make a prototype to making a dental implants or something. So maybe you can explore a better uh, technology in your uh, exercise, uh, things which you are doing or uh, any instruments which you are making or any designs you are making in treating your patients. So Finding innovations is just finding a gap and finding out, okay, can I come up with a better solution to a problem? One more example, which I want to bring, which is like, uh, which, which might give you a new idea of how uh, people are developing tools in healthcare sector. So this is an invention about uh, immunoscore, which is a cancer test. So generally uh, cancer test, uh, what happens that, uh, we, we take a cancer tissue and we try to find out uh, what is the severity of a cancer. So, but this, this scientist has, uh, he's an inventor and he's a doctor as well, like you. So he has found out that can, there are other things which can be seen as the indicators of severity of cancer. So basically this immunoscore is a cancer test for colon cancer. So they are looking uh, uh, for the tumor sam uh, samples, but they are looking for immuno uh, cytotoxic T cells in that particular tissue, and they are feeding this how much T cells are T cells count are there to a software, and a software is giving up a score which can tell what is the severity of a cancer. So rather than uh, so, I am basically uh, after giving a lot of data to a computer, I am asking them to give a score on the basis of cytotoxic T cell that what is the severity of cancer, hence reducing the diagnostic time and finding a better tool for diagnosis of cancer. This is a real invention. This is also, this, this invention also won, won an inventor's award. And maybe like you, you can find out that what are the other indicators, which are indirect indicator of a particular kind of disease, which can tell, okay, this is the immune response and this is how a disease can be diagnosed. Okay. So uh, this, this, I, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure maybe you will get some ideas to invent uh, new things out of this. So, and now the next question is people think that getting a patent is a very difficult thing. So let me tell you, pat getting a patent in India as on today is like very easy. So uh, the first step is always, uh, which I recommend to my clients is filing for a provisional application whenever you are doing a research and you think it's about to get completed so you can just write a title in 15 words abstract in 150 words and e-filing of a patent can be done by individual inventor and patent office charges just 1600 rupees for that for an individual inventor like for example Komen, you are an individual inventor Arti, you are an individual inventor can file a patent today right now e-filing is there you don't have to go anywhere in 1600 rupees i think which is a very nominal thing to start with right and apart like let's say your uh, bcip let's say supports your innovation and wants to file patent so in this year all the universities have been granted 80 percent of the fees reduction so it's a very low and nominal fees in india now to get a uh, patent pending status and file the patents and especially making India com campaigns and our Nirbhar Bharat campaigns are helping a lot in increase of patent filing in India. So I uh, encourage all the uh, doctors and all the physiotherapists participating in this event that look for ideas and we are definitely here to help you in the patents filing. So Every uh, so, what I really believe that core task of any innovator is to solve problems. So, more problems we are able to solve, so we can come up with better and a happier world. So, uh, and uh, you and you deserve. If you have any innovative idea, you deserve to see it come to your life. So, we play an important role as uh, our company in technology ideation. That you are. Uh, 
uh, uh, looking for any technology, but you are not able to develop that technology. You don't know what, is it going in the right pathway or not. So uh, uh, we are we are here to help you in technology ideation. Check if your idea is patentable or not. Bring innovation, validating your idea and helping get it patented or commercialized. So end-to-end -end solutions from ideation to developing of a product and coming into the light and seeing it in the real world is is we are we are here to help you with all these things so we are here to help individual innovators individual uh, scientists innovator uh, individual researchers uh, in this regard or we we would be very happy if we, we can collaborate with bcip we can help you set up innovation and ip cell inside their college where they can develop an ecosystem inside of them where uh, we can train their researchers their team their management and more and more patents we can see in future coming up from your institution and of course uh, phd chambers of commerce we are looking for a very long term collaboration with them and, and we are trying to reach out to people so that we can help in all these aspects and uh, finally, you can reach me if you want to reach me out. This is my email ID, Cheshta, C H E S H T A, at the rate I I P T A dot com. This is my email ID, which is available. You can reach me out at this email ID if you need any kind of help. And I'm looking for a collaboration with, with the management and the uh, chambers of commerce, which are there in the session today. So, this is it from my side. So uh, I hope the session was useful and gave a lot of ideas. Uh, 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 for like you and if you have any questions you can put down in the chat i'm available to answer any type of question thank you thank you so much ma'am for this insightful and uh, actually inspiring session and uh, as i have already introduced gaurav sir i would now like to hand over the session to gaurav sir welcome sir Hi, uh, I'm audible. Yes, sir. Wonderful. I'm just going to share my screen now. I'm not able to view the screen. Uh, uh, Chester, ma'am, you have to stop sharing the screen. I think, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Gaurav Gogia, uh, practicing IP counsel with United IPR. Uh, I think my introduction has been given, so I will not get into that. Um, straight away coming to the IP, what it is, how will you as professionals benefit out of it? And uh, just going to share some of the insight and know-how on IP in the contemporary world. My screen is visible now. Yes, sir. Yes, and uh, as we can associate ourselves in the since the of time, young innovators and creators have transformed our world to the power of their imagination. Uh, today, new innovators and forms of artistic expressions are transforming our lives at unprecedented rate. I believe that with the contribution that the university has to offer, the PhD is coming forward and uh, we as professionals are, are working together. I'm confident that we can take IP a step forward and 
uh, create a, an atmosphere which is holistic for IT IP professionals and for uh, for all young entrepreneurs who are forcing to to seek protection and enforcement of their legitimate creativity, authorship, ideas, innovations. So these are the terms that are, that we come forward to, that we come across, and that that we are uh, protecting on day in and day out basis. The different types of copyrights which we are protecting, which starts with inventions, designs, creative works. Yeah, inventions happens to be the subject matter of your trade for your um, brands, which are subject matter of trademarks. Now this is um, an underemphasized area of practice when it trade. marks professional such as information which is supplied by a patient to describe the symptoms and tell others of their ailments so uh, how how is trademark benefiting them or how is branding protecting them how many of us are using the practo app today if we see that app has been increasingly used by by the young generation and doctors are now uh, making their visibility more and more through that app likewise there are other applications and uh, uh, for us where the doctors are coming forward. So unless these four hours are given appropriate protection or unless you as doctors are being protected by the IP, I feel that uh, the, the innovation will somehow not uh, pave way for a better future or the kind of future that, that we are aiming for in a way that the, the outreach of your application will only be successful if you are protecting it through IP. Now, how does that work? Um, I've given a good overview so far on, on IP and I've been talking about some, some general terms, but let us be more specific. How are they crucial for a business? Um, let's start with the making of an entrepreneur. You start at point zero. Um, Regardless of whether you are entering into a goods industry or a service industry, today when you start, you start at point zero and gradually you make something, you, you create a niche for yourself, you, you come up with something that you are expert at and thereafter you seek yourself to be listed somewhere. You seek yourself to be placed somewhere and you as professional can excel. So that is where you start or you, you dwell this concept of starting your own enterprise. And that is when you move from the point zero to a maker to an innovator. Um, you may come up with anything that is inventive. And uh, as, as the previous speaker also had mentioned, patent and uh, registration in India is not as difficult now as, as it used to be. The timelines have been streamlined. The procedures have been uh, streamlined. You can, the moment you come up with an idea, you can file a provisional application. But the Gaurav sir, we are not able to hear you. I think there is some network issue, some technical error is there. Sir will be with us right back. You can improve it. You have one year time. You have 12 months time during which you can innovate and create and better your invention as well. So before specification, you can, you, you are granted time wherein you can, you know, improvise and improve on your, on your initial idea. So the moment you have something which is conceivable as a patent, Perhaps they can help, help you with the protection of your innovation. Likewise, if you have designed some particular article which has a unique shape, that can be protected. If you've come up with a uh, utility work, let's say today you have written a, a, a book on physiotherapy or on some of the book. Best practice. You can finish it. I'm 
is that Hello, sir. This is from the technical team. You follow. Your yes, voice is cracking. Second, the patent is copyright. Right, but nonetheless, I'm facing evidence in support of your registration. And uh, once your invention, so the first step is the identity importance. So we see that many times. People... Okay, my voice is not my video. Perhaps that would make it a little better. Um, am I audible now? Yes, sir. I'll go a little slow and please let me know if I'm so yes um, you were discussing on the identification of the IP right so this is the very first step um, we have to be correct with the terminology um, many times we see that um, the the doctors or the scientists who we interact with when they come up with their unique work when, when they when they come up with their inventive work they uh, loosely call they loosely term patent as a replaceable with IP. So even if they have um, a, a copyrightable work, they, they'll call it as patent, or if they have a unique logo which they want to protect for their services, then they'll call it Mujabna brand patent. Karana hai. So, so that is uh, you know, a common uh, a mistake that we see people make. So the terminology has to be correct. You need to identify what is your IP right. If it is a brand, you will have it registered as a trademark. If it is a logo, you can file it as a copyright or as a trademark or both. If it is a, a slogan that you have, it is a um, unique design you have. So you have to identify what is the uh, concerned IP right in which you are seeking protection. So uh, let us start with the instance of copyright. So first of all, you identify what copyright is. Then you have to seek a solution and then lifetime uh, you enjoy your copyrighted work and thereafter your legal hires will uh, reap benefits for another 60 years. Now what can and cannot be copyrighted is something that's uh, to be understood here. Um, copyright is it gives you an exclusive right to do or to exclude others from doing. That is what most IPs would do, but copyright is often referred to as a negative right because it is preventing others to copy your work. And it is also a bundle of rights because within one single right, you're getting to write, reproduce, right to communicate to the public, right to adopt, adapt, translate, transliterate. So these are various rights which are assigned to you, which are conferred upon you the moment you secure your um, uh, piece of work. Um, and the, the way you can protect this only by, by publishing your copyright. Um, we also encourage you to file a copyright application whenever you create a new work. Uh, it, it, it's easy for you to establish your copyrighted work if it's published over the internet. You have a date of priority. You have a date when you uh, write a Twitter a tweet or you write a Facebook post or you uploaded a YouTube video. So that is when you know that it's it's, uh, it's there. The, the date of first use is, is always there. But when no such work goes in the public domain that can be documented, it is always advisable to have your work copyrighted to, and to file it uh, with a copyright registrar so that it gives you a priority. It also helps in establishing that you were the true and rightful owner of that particular piece of work. So what are the benefits which flow from copyright? It, uh, it says there's no official registration that is required, as I just mentioned, but it's always advisable um, if you're writing a book or if you have um, a piece of song that, that you have in your mind if you want to register. So you can always go ahead and do that. Um, you can sell or pass on the work to others. So this is the, a unique feature which, which all IP rights offer you. You can either keep the IP work with you or you can assign it to someone or you can license it to someone. So it is just like your any other tangible property. Let's say you have a house in which you live. So you can either retain the house for your own self or you can give it to someone else for use. Uh, when you allow someone else to use it, you take a rent from them. So just like in, in IP also, there's a concept of licensing. When you allow someone else to use your IP, you charge uh, a license fee from them and you can license your rights to them. Um, same is the case with copyright. 
or you can completely transfer your property to someone. When you are transferring your property, the ownership changes and that is called as assignment. So you can also assign your rights to a third party. You can license it or you can use it for your own purpose. Um, it also gives you the liberty to create any derivative work from the copyrighted work. It, um, it comes into effect immediately upon its creation. So um, it is not necessary for you to register or to have your priority from the date of registration. If you have an earlier date, which you can prove was the date of creation of your artwork, you'll get your rights from the date of creation and not only from the date of public, from the date of registration. Uh, use, reuse and reproduce the copies and can sell the original copies of the work. So today you have created a work Tomorrow, what I do is I, I take a CD and I copy the work in a, in a CD and someone does it in a pen drive and there's another person who is sharing the link on the internet. So all these rights will flow only with the original author or the creator or the owner of work and not with, with anyone else. So without your permission, no one else can use, reuse, reproduce the copies in any form whatsoever. Now, what can be copyrighted? You have literary works which are copyrightable, musical works, dramatic, cinematographic. So these are the kind of works which are um, copyrighted. And then you have sound recording and the uh, compilations as well. Now, what cannot be copyrighted? Something which is already there in public domain. Let's say if I have a, a calendar, no matter how unique I, I devise a calendar, um, it, it will always show the, the, the date and day uh, and the unique co combination of date and day. Uh, so this particular concept cannot be copyrighted. Perhaps the image which I'm using in my calendar is, is my copyright, not the calendar itself. Um, some common words or uh, your ideas, the first image as you can see cannot be copyrighted. Um, the, the last one we have example for Constitution of India. Now, this is a bear constitution, the bear act, which, which is there as it is, which has been enacted by the parliament. So you cannot have any copyright in the constitution, but if there's a commentary on that, every commentary, every commentator who is who is writing his comments on the, the, the constitution of India will have their own views and own expressions of those views, and those can be protected as copyright. Um, the most important concept in copyright law is that it subsists only in original work, which means that it must be created by the author and not copied from somewhere else. So there's always some degree of skill and labor or judgment which must be involved in its creation. Now, what is the extent of originalities that, that is required to produce, you know, to, to establish that the copyright work that you have created is original? So that really depends on case to case basis. We have received questions like, what if uh, we simply compile the data which is existing in public domain and we create our own database of ourselves for something that's already there? So it, it depends on whether you have put in skill and labor, whether that was involved in creation of your work and whether your work is something that is over and above of what is already existing in the public domain. If that test is satisfied, then your work can be considered as original and is copyrighted protective as well. The duration, as I mentioned, is uh, 60 years from the death of the author. So it stays during the lifetime of the author or the creator of work and 60 years thereafter. Likewise, we have the concept of trademark where uh, I'll just give you a this example, a single letter T, as you can see, it represents Tata. Now, the next slide is another letter T, which is Toyota. So both the letters, despite being the same letter, same uh, alphabetical letter, they denote and they connote a different brand altogether, which is recognizable. Now, we see this example of Hyundai and Honda. On the left, we have a Japanese brand. On the right, we have a South Korean brand. Um, even though they're both letters H, but they are depicted in such a, a peculiar graphical representation that they serve the function of a trademark. Then we also have some um, unconventional trademarks which have been now recognized, such as color combinations. On the left, we have this John Deere tractor where you can see yellow and green color. So the moment anyone sees this color combination, they, they can think of a trademark. On the right, on the other hand, is the orange and gray um, chainsaw machine, which is also protected as a trademark. This shape, I think, is familiar to uh, all of us, and it is uh, it's identifiable as, a, as a, a trademark because they know that the moment you see this particular product, you will say as Crocs, uh, even though the Bottom 
them for you you can recognize these sound trademarks by, by the easiest recognition is through your mobile phones when you Nokia has a unique one, Xiaomi has a unique one, Nokia and uh, Apple, then uh, OnePlus, etc. They all have the unique ringtones. The moment you, you listen to those tones, you can recognize that this is a particular brand that phone that, you know, that is ringing in someone's pocket. I'll not go into the concept of enforcement of IP rights, otherwise that will get a little too complicated. But yes, I would like to share some of the aspects of industrial designs because uh, I just mentioned about shape trademarks and uh, how are they different from designs. For design, the, the only parameter is that it should be aesthetically appealing. Now, here there is an overlap with the patent to the effect that the requirement of prior publication or the requirement of having uh, no nowhere been published in the world is, is the same as that of patent. And the requirement of novelty Now, here is a card which we can identify as a suit, and um, that's essentially a design for you. So, even mobile phones are now protected as designs. You have unique perfume bottles which are protected as designs. Uh, here, here is an example of some designs which are published in the design journal. Uh, jewelry designing is common. Then we have a footwear sole, um, lampshades. Uh, there's a lipstick uh, holder, which is which has a unique design. Then we have a, a door handle, which is protected as a design. Then we have uh, a, a front cowl for the motorcycles, which is very uniquely designed and is protected as a design. Then chairs and another lamps. So this was one of the uh, image which I took from a university which I was where I was delivering the lecture, and uh, I saw the uniqueness in the. Uh, in, in the common room of that particular university where students were so innovative to have this design uh, of uh, the lamp. If you see, it looks like Michael Jackson, if you ask me, on, on the right side. Uh, but it, it's a unique lampshade. Looks like a dancer who is holding his hat, but a, a very unique shape of uh, lampshade, which must be protected as a design. So these kind of innovations, this kind of uh, inventions and ideas, um, you are encouraged to come forward and and play with your creativity and to experiment with uh, and to uh, to come forward and seek protection thereof. Now, the good part for young entrepreneurs and for young professionals is that um, the government is supporting inventions. The government is offering a lot of schemes. There are uh, benefits to MSMEs, the benefits to startups, their tax rebates, their IP rebates, and there are also IP reimbursements. Uh, so if you have, uh, let's say, spent uh, some amount on your trademark application, so up to 10,000 rupees can be uh, refunded or they, they can be reimbursed to you if you are registered as an MSME. Likewise, for uh, uh, patents up to 1 lakh rupees, depending on how much you've spent on obtaining that patent registration can be reimbursed to you. So. These are important initiatives which the government have taken. They want you to come forward and to see protection of your rights. Uh, this was a very broad and a basic illustration of some of the IP rights which are popular, which are more known in the public domain and uh, we receive a lot of questions. So again, I would uh, come back to my basic, basic component is on the identification of the IP right. Once you have identified that's half battle one. Professionals and the chambers like PhD will come forward to, to assist you with, with the rightful protection and to support your uh, inventions, claims, etc. On physiotherapy, if, if there's any, the, any uh, material that you have that you have written that you seek protection for, Any other uh, content that you have created and you want to put uh, a problem with us and we'll happy to we'll be happy to uh, assist with the protection thereof. With this, I will to conclude my.
small presentation and I'm available for any questions that anyone has. Thank you so much, sir. I would like to thank all the dignitaries. And we are ready with all the questions lined up, sir. And ma'am. The first question is How long is a patent valid in India? So the initial, okay, it's for me or for the other speaker? Anybody can answer. Sir, sir, we can start with you, sir. Yeah, I'm sorry. So it is uh, the initial grant of patent. Uh, is for 10 years and it is up to a maximum period of 20 years that you can patent okay sir. thank you sir um so annual, then you have new it for during which you can enjoy your patent is 20. yeah oh, oh, okay sir and ma'am uh, the question for you is what are the challenges of idea I think challenges of IPR are, first of all, that a lot of uh, innovations that are not being identified and they go in waste. Uh, from a research perspective, like researchers are generally more inclined towards paper publication rather than going for patenting because they don't know about it. So it is not coming to a commercial level. There's a difference between a research paper and a publication. So so this, this is a one of the greatest challenge and also like uh, 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 my uh, Go Mr. Gaurav told me he showcased a very uh, picture of a lamb which was very innovative so people come up with innovations people have a lot of creativity but that but using IPR is it coming to a commercial level and getting uh, for its purpose is is the greatest challenge uh, thank you ma'am and ma'am uh, moving on we have a question which says what is the risk of an IPR infringement? Can you please repeat your question? Uh, sir, my question is, what is the risk of an IPR infringement? What are the what of? Risk of, what is the risk, risk of? Yes, okay. The risks related to IPR infringement are several. So first of all, if you have your IP protected, uh, that is when you are in the best position to identify if someone has infringed and to actually enforce your IP right. Now, how to enforce your IP right is something that I can advise you. Um, you there are various mechanisms. If you, let's say, have a, a, a patent, so you need to monitor which are the other patent applications which are being filed for the similar invention. You can file pre-grant and post-grant oppositions against them. If there are trademarks which are being filed, then you have what... So your voice is breaking and you need this voice. I'm really sorry, sir. So your voice is breaking. I'm really sorry, sir. Uh, meanwhile, we can move on to our next question. That, uh, ma'am, which item are not patented? Like, for what items we cannot file the patents? Okay, so uh, patents are basically only for scientific inventions. Like, uh, but if you have a uh, like a book which is written by you, so that is a copywriting copyrighted material. So it, a book will not be patented, a book will be copyrighted. Or let's say you're opening up your own physiotherapy clinic. So you have a trademark for that. Let's say you are opening Shivam Clinic of Physiotherapy. So that is a brand name. So that will be protected under trademarks. And if you have a design, let's say uh, there's a design of a mouse or design of any um, instrument which you have created the outer structure of it so it will be protected under design the technology will be patented but the outer design will be under design thing so brand names are trademarks writing pieces like book poems drawings they are copyrighted they are under copyright protection outer designs are protected under designs you're not audible 
sorry ma'am uh, i have a personal query ma'am uh-huh. um, in shark tank piyush uh, sir said that uh, he had patented several names apart from lens card for example toy card and other cards so ma'am was that a patent or a trademark it was a trademark it is not a patent names are not patented names are trademark because they are brand names patents are the technological inventions like i gave you example of exoskeleton uh, a technology use of ai for a uh, healthcare so these are technology is patented and the name particular name like banarasi das chandiwala institute of physiotherapy so this is a name which comes under trademark protection lens card is a trademark flip card is a trademark amazon is a trademark nike is a trademark so these are all trademark mcdonalds is a trademark so the big m yellow m which you see that's a trademark and trademarks the difference is that trademarks are for forever they are for infinite time they has to be renewed after every 10 years for example steve jobs started apple but steve jobs is dead but apple is still continuing its business so apple as a trademark is forever after every 10 years we have to renew that because company will keep its operation open but as compared to that patents are only granted for 20 years after 20 years it becomes a public knowledge it is not no longer exclusive it is free to use thank you thank you so much ma'am um uh, i would like to thank all the dignitaries and speakers that was quite an informative session thank you for this elaborative session ma'am and sir now i would like to ask a few questions so i have we have we are done with the question ask question answer session so now i would like to um, invite our officiant in charge dr nidhi kalra ma'am to extend a vote of thanks please ma'am thank you shivam i hope i am audible yes ma'am uh, i would like to extend my gratitude to phd chamber for organizing such a nice session and you know uh, updating our students or i would say rather awareing them about all these things uh, especially now when uh, you know we recently have introduced to them the concept of innovation and entrepreneurship but we are still struggling to uh, i know i'm audible yeah i'm i was just mentioning that though we have tried to introduce this concept but uh, still we are struggling to make them understand the exact meaning of what is innovation what is entrepreneurship what is ipr and i am very grateful that all the speakers present here today have fully really explained especially its role in the field of physiotherapy i would like to extend and would like to specially mention whatever cheshta ma'am has elaborated today because you know uh, this is very commonly seen in all the physiotherapy fraternity that what we can do how we can contribute what is patenting because they are up, st- till now they are struggling more into their publications and especially in the medical field though the diagnostic fields have emerged nicely but still there is a lot of work to be done in the field of treatment you know i would like to mention that you know even making some treatment protocol can be patented if that is something novel idea right ma'am if it i i think that's right uh, okay god of sir yeah so uh, this thing is uh, you know this thing also i would like to tell to my students present here who are attending today that it is not just about developing a new modality it is also about developing a new treatment protocol maybe especially what we have learned during covid how the people have res- how the people different people from dif- with different complications have responded so developing certain such kind of techniques treatments you know also needs to come up and people should pay, think of patenting them so uh, thank you so much and yes gorav sir uh, i would say that uh, you know ipr just like insurance the way we do for our health similarly we must also insure our intellect so it is very important that we protect it legally and uh, that is uh, this way only we can make a mark so thank you for giving us three words of innovation you know giving back to the industry the novelty 
and the way you mentioned about the laws how to protect and how small simpler designs can make a change these all are very important aspects and i hope this has been a great beginning for the students to understand and maybe in the coming years we have few innovators coming from our side and i totally accept the proposal that we'll have uh, we will be collaborating with the phd chamber and people like you who can help us guide like guide us in making some kind of incubators and helping us innovate or at least making us aware about our potential so you know one basic challenge like cheshta ma'am was mentioning the challenges about iprs i would say people don't trust their abilities they feel ki this is just a simpler thing what we have designed but they don't realize the designs the this simple design can be also patented so protecting intellect protect, this is kind of protection of the creativity the creative minds so thank you so much sir for infusing this idea thank you all the people from phd chamber who have been helpful in organizing this uh, webinar with our students and infusing in them this spirit of innovation the spirit of ipr and how ipr is all is can extend can be extended in the field of physiotherapy thank you so much sir and soon we will be also coming up with a lot of patents i believe so thank, thank you, you. thank you so much ma'am and uh, just one word uh, for all the attendees if uh, i can see there's still a lot of questions and doubts which people may have so uh, if you can just pen down all those doubts and share it with either myself or with phd but kanchan ma'am is there so you could share share the questions and uh, in a question your format we can respond to those questions so at least there is more clarity on the legal aspects or on the procedures that are to be followed they might be concerned with respect to the cost part etc so all those concerns if at all are there with any of the students uh, will be happy to address them on yeah. courtesy basis yeah. thank, thank you guru thank you guru and thank you uh... Nidhi ji I am Kanchan Zutshi I take care of the IPR center in PhD Chamber of Commerce and Industries I think I was in touch with Dr Devinder uh, ji who, who had just uh, taken this initiative to organize something for your organization so see this uh, what I uh, you know I was just uh, Cheshta had also spoken and Gaurav is one of the leading experts in the IPR thank you gorov for being here and uh, cheshta also for joining phd i think this is your first event with phd chamber so what i would like to highlight here to all the students that phd has an ipr facilitation cell so which is being supported by ministry of msme so we are here to guide you to help you as uh, nidhi ji you have rightly pointed out so there are many innovations there are in the students with the faculty but more or less you know they are all publications we really don't know their value so how to take them forward so this is the reason we are here today and uh, not only with you we have organized these sessions all across india in various universities and we are having mou with several universities to take forward this initiative so i know this was in uh, starting uh, you know discussion awareness drive with your university but we would like to actually work uh, you know maybe uh, if you want to organize training session more you know uh, because you know in one or two hour it cannot be highlighted all the things cannot be highlighted physical events also we are uh, our uh, office is here at shri fort auditorium so we can organize more of training sessions and we can just uh, have a word or you can just come sometimes to the phd chamber with devendra ji and all we can see where and uh, even for the ipr policy you know if you need some kind of an help we are having several experts on our panel not only experts so you will be getting support from the msme uh, ministry also from the office of controller of general also so please uh, remain in touch with us because this is our main uh, motive to help and guide to students to make them you know to uh, this was a catalytic kind of an session to ignite them look there is something which we normally these are those intangible benefits are there which all of you should know tomorrow your brand can become a big brand so you have to protect it you have to register it until and unless you register it you cannot tomorrow say this is my brand this is mohammad asif's brand he cannot say that until and unless he knows it is value he cannot register his you know even even a small we have seen how small small you know jiva you know our ayurvedic brand how it has come up I and mean, you see the valuation of jiva today it was zomato swiggy you know all these these are all brands so students you should be aware of this and 
any kind of any support you require we are, we at the phd chamber are there so please be touch in us come to our you know premishish my colleague is there so who is uh, having details of your and i think initially i had a word with devinda ji here just given me a call so any more sessions suppose you want proper sessions proper patenting you know how to draft how to you know for commercialization you know we can have those separate session for your students so this is what uh, from our end and apart from that there are various schemes for startups those of who, who want to go into the entrepreneurship so government is helping so please uh, you know uh, please come to our office is very near so we can guide you we can just help you where to go in the ministries what kind of in support you require so this is all about uh, uh, what i wanted to say so though i was just hearing our experts so there were a couple of meetings today i couldn't join initially but i was just hearing all the experts and all the students uh, and all the discussion which was going around and thank you so much and thank you so much nidhi ji thank you all for joining today's session but please don't take ip very lightly ip ipr has to be taken very seriously and then only you can reap it as benefits we have seen it and in you all must be reading in newspapers and all it is it is not something which is it is an intangible asset which normally we in india we have seen our own innovations are being getting patented outside uh, india so why so we all of us have to be aware of our rights then only we can take advantage of our rights thank you so much thank you so much ma'am i mean uh, of course uh, this is just a beginning so the journey begins here and it's more to come so of course we will be collaborating and we will have more such sessions because it is a very important thing today which we have touched upon just touch superficially so i think for more depth knowledge and understanding and practical things so we need a lot of more sessions a lot of understanding so of course we will be in touch and it was a great opportunity to have you here today thank you so much thank you everybody present here thank you so much ma'am thank you thank you nidhi ji thank you thank you ma'am thank you gaurav thank you thank you gaurav sir thank you jishta ma'am thank you kanchan ma'am and thank, thank you dr nidhi and of course i would like to thank all the participants and my management for providing such a great opportunity thank you guel sir he is not with us right now but i would really like to thank him for the motivation kalpana ma'am and kanchan ma'am for the motivation she has she has been uh, the pillar who has made this possible in the first talk so thank you all of you so we will be closing the session thank you very much